Hi, welcome back to Rust 101. This is video 12. My name's Andy, um, and we're learning how to code in Rust. And this module, uh, we're starting a new module in the slides uh, called Module A3, which is about traits and generics. Um, just to recap some of the things we've looked at in previous recent videos, we looked at ownership and how in Rust it's always clear someone owns everything and is responsible for cleaning up its memory. Uh, and then we looked at references, which are a way of referring to something that you don't own. Um, we talked about structs and enums, which are the way of like holding on to data. Uh, we talked about two specific enums, option and result, which are to do with option is for um, uh, saying there's either something or there's nothing, and result is a way of saying either th something worked out well or there was an error. Uh, we also looked at um, pattern matching and the match statement, which is a way of dealing with enums. And we looked at slices, which is a way of saying not just refer to one thing, but refer to like a whole chunk of things. So in this module A3, we're going to be basically dealing with uh, generics, and I'll explain what that means. Um, and basically, we're, we're going to motivate in this video why you would want generics and the kind of basic way of how to do it, which is using traits. Um, and we, and in, later, in later videos, we're going to look at um, some of the traits that are already available to you in the standard library. And we're going to talk about lifetime bounds, which is getting onto difficult bits of Rust, uh, we'll get to that when we get to it, not this video. Okay, so this video is just traits and generics. Um, and here we go. So um, imagine we had a situation where we wanted to be able to add up different types of number. And actually, like adding is probably a, a weird example because obviously we've got a plus operator. Um, so bear with us. Um, these, these functions are just going to add, but imagine you wanted to do something more complicated with these numbers. I don't know. Um, uh, I don't know, average them, or I don't know, weighted average them, or you know, something that isn't already available in the standard library. But for the example, just to make it absolutely explicit, we're going to be adding up numbers. And the point here is we, we want to add up different types of numbers. So we might want to add up U32s, which are unsigned 32-bit uh, numbers, or I32s, which are signed 32-bit numbers, um, or F32s, which are um, floating point which use up 32 bits in their representation. And there might be all kinds of other numbers that we want to add up. And we're having to write one function for every type of number we want to add up. And it even gets worse because what if we want to add like an I32 to a U32 or something like that, then we'd have to add, we'd have, we'd have like a combinatorial explosion. So um, we need something called generics or generic code, which is a way of expressing how you add up two numbers without having to rewrite it every single time, just because the types are different. Now, we've already dealt with some generics in our uh, earlier videos because enums like option and result are actually generic types themselves because they take in a type. In, in, inside the diagonal brackets, um, you say this is not just an, an option, but it's an option that might contain an I32 or a string or something else. Um, so that those diagonal brackets are the way we say um, the, like we're providing a type. Um, so we're extending that idea now. We're going to write some generic functions. So here is what our generic add function might look like. Instead of being add underscore u32, it's going to be add diagonal brackets t to say this function is called add. Its name is just add, but um, it's it's like a template for a function instead of actually a function. Um, and you, you can substitute in t, which is what type of thing you're going to add. So um, here's how to understand this code that we're looking at here. So the name of the function is add. And then this diagonal brackets t part, that's saying um, I, I'm, I need like a type argument. So in the same way that these arguments, LHS and RHS, are um, like normal arguments to functions, this is like a, an argument to the kind of creation of the function to say um, I need a t in order to like even describe this function to you. Give me a type. And then I'll describe this function to you. So if you give us a type, we'll say, OK, this function takes in one argument, which is of type T, another argument, which is of type T, and it returns something else, which is of type T. So you can see how this is like a template for a function. Um, so that's all very well. So now we, we've got a way of expressing uh, this function needs you to give us a T before we can tell you what it, uh, what it looks like. And that's called a generic function. And by the way, there could be more than one uh, thing in here. At the moment, we're just using one T here, one type. Um, but you could you could make a 
function which is generic over multiple types. Okay, so the question is, um, how do we write the code where it just says snip here? And in order to be able to write meaningful code in here and check whether it's right, we need to be able to say what you can do with a T, right? Otherwise you won't be able to do anything inside the function because the compiler can't check whether um, you can add things to it, whether you can call methods on it or whatever. Um, so in order to be able to write something in that body, we've got to be able to say what T is like. Whoops. So um, uh, that th that is called bounds. We need some bounds on T. Um, we need to be able to tell Rust what T can do, uh, what types of T are okay, and also we need a way of actually like implementing the things that T can do. So we'll see that. All right. So the way we do this, the way we describe the capabilities of some thing is by creating a trait. So a trait in my mind is very similar uh, to an interface in Java or an abstract base class um, in C++ or possibly in Python because they have a Python has those too. So a trait is a way of describing uh, what methods the a thing can have without actually saying what that thing is, right? So uh, this trait my add, which we might call, I guess in Go we would call it an adder or something because that's how you name interfaces in Go. But it's basically uh, at least I'm pretty sure. Um, uh, but this is basically a description of something we don't know what, which has the ability to my add. And so the way we describe my add, um, uh, this trait, is that it, it, in this case it only has one function definition in it. Notice that there's no uh, curly bracket body for this function, so it's just an interface. It's just describing um, what methods you have and not telling you how those methods actually work. Someone else is going to have to implement them, right? Um, so we, it's saying there is a function called my underscore add and it takes in a reference to self and it takes in a reference to something called other which is also a reference to the type self. This capital S self means the type of so in this case it would be my add but a reference to itself uh, so it takes in a reference to itself it takes in an other which is a reference to some other thing of the same type as itself uh, so I just misspoke then. It doesn't, this is not, this other is not actually another reference to itself. It's another thing, which is a reference to something the same type as itself. And it returns, um, something which is also of that type. So you can see how this kind of, um, fits in with, um, the add, um, function that we had before, which takes in two types and, uh, or two things of the same type and returns something else of the same type. So now we've got a trait which describes the ability to, to my add. Right, not not the ability to add. This is slightly confusing wording. Um, so uh, that was the, so that just to go back that this definition here, my add, is a way of saying there is a property called my add, which some types can have. And now we need to say which types have it and what they do when you actually do that. Okay, so here here's how we do that for one type. So we say impl my add for u32. So that means the I'm going to give the the u32 type this ability to my add and in order to do that I actually have to provide an implementation of the my add function um, as opposed to just saying that such a thing exists I'm now saying this is how it exists this is what it is for the type u32 notice by the way this is not for some uh, struct or enum that we've just designed this is for like a built-in type in rust called u32 you can implement traits for your own structs and enums but you can also implement them for types that are already included in rust and that can get that can be quite confusing um, but it's also incredibly useful and cool so in this case we're saying i want to add the ability to u32 to be able to my add and um, i'm providing an implementation so the the um, definition of the function has to match the trait that we saw in the previous slide the trait my add so it has to have a my underscore add function. It can't have other functions that are not defined in the trait. Um, and it has to have the same signature. It has to take in self and return. Uh, take something else of the same type of self and return a self. Um, and then we can implement that however we like. So now because we know we're inside a U32. So self here is a reference to a U32. 
and we know that other is also a U32, so we can use plus here because uh, we know the types exactly of self and other. And they're both a reference to U32, so we can add them up by saying star self to, to, to dereference it, to say give me the actual U32 behind that reference, give me the other actual U32 behind this other reference, add them up with plus. Now we've got a U32 which we can return. Notice we're not returning a reference to self here, we're returning a new instance of self, and self here is U32. So we're returning a U32. We added up two U32s, we got a U32, we return it, and we've implemented the my add trait for the U32 type. Okay. So um, let's let's have a little look at how we would use this. So that now we're not yet solving the problem we initially started off with, which is that we want this add diagonal bracket T thing to exist. Um, we'll get to that in a second, but first of all, this is like a sort of like side quest, which is now that we've implemented this trait, my add for U32, we can now use it directly on a U32. Forget all the generic stuff. So this is a way of adding methods or adding uh, abilities to uh, to structs and enums and types um, without um, having to go in and edit their actual code. You can just add it later. So you might think that's bad, you might think it's good. But look what we can do here. We can take this left variable, which is a U32, and we can call a method, my add, on it. Even though it is a U32, it's not some special type, it's a U32, but we can call my add on it. Why can we do that? Because we, we added this statement, which tells us that this trait, we, we want this trait to be active in this module. Um, so notice that no one mentions my, well, actually, ignore the code here, we'll get to that. But um, no, you can use add this use statement, and then no one uses, no one actually mentions the word my add. That's the most confusing part of this for me. Um, but we're still using this module, um, this trait, sorry, because here is where we're using it. So by bringing this trait into scope, um, we are adding this method to a U32. Um, that sounds like it might get confusing, and it can sometimes get confusing, but you won't be able to call this method unless you explicitly brought in this trait. So the kind of confusion level of it is limited. Anyway, so um, we've brought in the trait. We've, that means we've got this method. We can call it. So left is six, and when we call my add. Um, we pass a reference to that six into the my add function that we defined on the previous slide, a reference to this eight as well, it's in right. We get back the ability of uh, the result of adding those two together. So this result is a U32, and then we can assert that the result is 14. Uh, you can also, if you don't want to call the method um, in this standard method call way, or because there's some confusion about which method you might call, we can also explicitly call it by co by saying my add colon colon my add. So that's essentially using the fact that we brought this my add into scope um, and then calling this function that's defined inside it and then explicitly pass in the arguments. You can do this with any method in Rust. You can explicitly call it this way and pass in the self as the first argument and it has the same effect. So that's like a sidebar to say uh, if you've defined this trait for U32, you can then use it just as if that method existed on a U32 type, but only if you bring it into scope using this um, use statement. Uh, okay, so that was, now that I've defined a trait on U32, I can use it. So now let's go back to talking about generics. Uh, like so. So, um, This is, yeah, okay, so this is now a function that for some reason has been renamed to add values instead of add, but it's the same idea. We've got a function which is generic over type T, but notice we've added this colon my add part to say T can't just be anything. T has to be something that implements, where someone has implemented my add for this T. So this the, basically the compiler won't let us use add values with any type, unless that type um, has an implementation of my add defined for it. So once we've got that, um, once we know that, we know that T has my add, we know that it, therefore this has a my add method on it, so we can call my add. We could again have done it with using explicit syntax, but this is a kind of normal way of 
doing it. So we're basically saying um, this add values function takes in any type so long as it's a my add, and that means we can implement the body of that function um, using stuff we know about T. And we know T provides this my add method, um, so we can call that my my add um, method inside the body of the function, and furthermore. Um, the, so the way we expressed that up here was t colon my add, uh, and that is kind of fine. It's quite like a nice compact way of expressing relatively simple trait bounds. But when things get more complicated, you quite often want to just extract it out and say just put a t here, but then put a where clause after the return value. And here, here this where clause can be a whole list of all kinds of um, constraints on the generic types in our function. Okay, so um, now we've managed to define a function, add or add values um, as it's written on this slide, which um, has a useful body because we said enough about t that we said what it can do. So now we can implement add values. Um, we've already, we have implemented add values. This is the only implementation we need. Um, and then any function that we want to be able to call my add-on, or as in any function we want to be able to, any type, sorry, we want to be able to pass into add values, we just need to make sure we've got an implementation of my add, or whichever, basically, whichever methods we want to call inside this body need to be expressed in a trait, and then we need to implement that trait for every type that we want to use with this generic function. Okay. And uh, that is it for today. We'll get on to... Um, uh, having multiple arguments and stuff like that. So see you next time. Thanks for watching.